All right, so um, I want to take a look at what we're calling the first derivative test. And, um, you know, the first derivative test is going to allow us to analyze a function based on just the first derivative. So, so I mean, very self-explanatory. And really the key piece here is relating derivatives to the behavior of a function, whether it's increasing or whether it's decreasing. And so if you know you have a positive derivative, um, you know, so if your derivative is greater than zero, you know, think about like, okay, your slope's in like going like that. So that means that you must have been part of a function that was increasing. So we can say if the derivative is positive, then f of x is increasing. So we want to start associating those two things together. Um, and then similarly, if your derivative is negative, then your function will be decreasing. So that's really the, um, you know, like kind of like the basis here. You know, if you, if you, if you have a decreasing function, then your slope would be negative. Um, and so um, that's what's going to sort of allow us to justify and make, um, you know, some analysis of functions uh, by analyzing their first derivatives. Okay, so, um, and then just some language that the AP exam likes to, to um, you know, use or at least to be very similar to this um, in terms of, you know, conveying exactly what, you know, what it is that you're um, trying to show or prove. So um, notice our kind of like our, our standard set of, of uh, conditions here, right? Let's make sure our function's continuous in a closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. And then let's say we have a critical value. And remember, we know the definition of a critical value, right? A critical value is either the derivative of that value is equal to zero, or the derivative of that value would be um, undefined. So, you know, so we have these critical values. So if the derivative changes from a positive to a negative value at C, if the derivative, remember slope of a tangent line goes from positive to negative, that at that instant, at that one moment, then C would have to have been a maximum. Um, then, then C is a relative max. And I'm going to use the word relative because it will be the biggest in the area. It might be a global max, but at least it's a relative max. And just to kind of, again, get you um, kind of some bearings here. So like, it's like this right here, like that like your derivative would have gone from positive to negative. So I know that that's a maximum. This right here, your derivative going to positive to negative. So I know that's a maximum. So they're each relative maximums because they're each relatively larger than everything near it. But um, if I compare the two y values, I would say that's the global maximum. Okay, now what if your derivative changes from negative to positive, right? So very similar. Um, here, negative to positive. So if you go from negative to positive, then you know you're a, a minimum. If, if C, again, was a critical value. So you identify those critical values, and then you don't even have to like test anything. You can just you know um, analyze the derivative. So then C is a relative min. Okay. And then don't forget, you'd always have to check endpoints too. And I'll, you know, oh, look at that. It's already telling me to remind myself. Don't forget endpoints. Now, sometimes your derivative may not change. So like you might have a derivative that's zero, but then it doesn't change from positive to negative or negative positive. So then what you'd say would be that that value of C is going to be called what I call a saddle point. C is a saddle point. And I'll give you an example of a graph. Uh, I like to think of like y equals x cubed. All right? Think about what that graph looks like. Something like that. And at that one instant, right, at one, use yellow, uh, orange, uh, one instant, the derivative at that point, right at zero, is zero. But take a look at the slope of the tangent line. You went from positive slopes to more positive slopes. So at that one instant, even though it's a zero, there's not neither, it's neither a max nor a min, um, it's called a saddle point. And, and we're gonna talk a, a little bit more about saddle points when we get into the second derivative test. Um, so a little bit of a foreshadow here, like a saddle point actually is a second derivative feature, but um, it emerges at the first derivative test um, because uh, of the fact that it's still derivative would have been equal to zero. Um, like another, another case in point would be, um, another good example to have in your notes, uh, would be, how about this one? Y equals the Q root of X. Okay. It, it's a graph that, um, sort of looks like this, but, um, instead of having a zero tangent has a, has a vertical tangent. 
So, so at that moment in time, oops, I didn't mean to erase that. <laughs> at that moment in time, there is a vertical tangent line. Um, so, it's, so it's a critical value, right? It doesn't exist. It's derivative, so it's critical. But notice you went from increasing to more increasing. So, so that would be another saddle point. And, and again, give you a little bit of a, of a foreshadow here. Um, like, you know, what is a saddle point and, and, and what's really happening here? It has to do with the curvature. Take a look at that curvature of the parabola versus the curvature of the parabola here. So those that, that gets a change in curvature um, and, and that concavity change, again, that's kind of foreshadowing what's going to be happening in the second derivative. Now, what about the endpoints here? So let's say you're starting uh, an increasing interval, right? So if you have, um, so, you know, obviously, it's going to be a closed function. So, so here's, you know, you, you're starting an increasing interval, right? So there's your starting point. Well, if you begin an increasing interval, that means you are a, a, a relative max. So if C is the beginning of an increasing interval, then C is a relative max. And sometimes I don't even use the word relative. I just call it max and assuming it's relative. And then you can compare to see who's the absolute biggest. Okay, if C is the beginning of a decreasing interval, so start decreasing. Right? There's your C value, there's your C value. If you start decreasing, that means you're the highest point, right? You're the top of the top of the slope, so to speak. Um, if you're like skiing or something like that. So then we say C is a relative uh oh <laughs> so look at this. Oh my gosh, how how embarrassing. C is a relative minimum. I should have written right there. That took me a while to catch that. Uh C is a relative maximum. Whew, got that taken care of. Now, what if you end an increasing interval? So, so now we're like back up to here, at that first example up here, right? What if you end that increasing interval? Well, what were you? If you are the end of an increasing, you're the top of the top of the hill. You're a max. So, C is a relative max. And then, what if you're the end of a decreasing interval? Da -da 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 -da, right there. So that means you are a relative min. Now, uh, C is a relative min. Now, I'm hoping that, that this kind of like is like common sense, maybe if you draw a picture. Um, but at the same time, like I want to make sure that we know that this like pretty well, because th these would be the reasons you'd have to justify. How do you know you have a max? How do you know you have a min? So if it's an endpoint, you're going to use one of these phrases. You know, I know it's a minimum because, oh, it's the beginning of an increasing interval. Um, how would I know it would be increasing? Because the derivative would have started positive. So um, so then, uh, and, and I love this next line, is right? Uh, being zero is not good enough. Like, it's like, like I feel like, oh, what a lame motivational, right? What, what a lame motivational speech or something like that, right? Being zero is not good enough. Um, you're better. But no, but the, the idea is being zero is not good enough, meaning that just because your derivative is zero doesn't mean you're a max nor a min. Remember, we saw those two versions of a saddle point, right, where you come up and your derivative is zero for just that one instant, that's not good enough. You're not a max, you're not a min, because your derivative didn't change signs. Um, same thing like if you're a vertical tangent line, right? So for that one instant, you have an undefined value. So those are both critical values, but not good enough, right? Being zero is not good enough, or being undefined is not good enough. Okay, so um, so from that, you know, that, that kind of background, um, you know, in terms of how would you justify things, like those, I'm hoping, um, you know, like I'm hoping that that, again, is, is common sense. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll take a look at the next uh, video and see maybe some, uh, you know, examples. So, and hopefully, I don't make any mistakes, but if I do, I'll catch them like I did in this video.